There's a lot about Susie Merchant and Jerry Kill's careers that are well documented. Merchant is Michigan State's women's basketball coach, has won a couple of conference titles, and in the past has been named Big Ten Coach of the Year. Kill is Minnesota's football coach. He's coming off of back-to-back eight-win seasons, and this year was named Big Ten Coach of the Year. How they got to those stops is very unique. In fact, their starts to the sideline will forever be linked together. Since the early 1960s in Saginaw, Michigan, several have passed down College Drive to this Division II school, Saginaw Valley State University. For Susie Merchant, Saginaw Valley wasn't just a passing stop, but a head coaching start. And that began when the women's basketball job opened up in 1995. I grew up in the state and I was an assistant at Oakland University at the time. The men's coach, Greg Campy, had said, look, you need to apply for this job. I'm like, me? Are you kidding? He's like, you are going to be a great head coach. I'm like, I am? He said, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, well, it'll be a good experience just to interview for the job. Of course, the job was only $12,000 a year, and it was um, part-time pay with full-time responsibilities, so there wasn't a lot of applicants at the time. To help with the coaching search, Saginaw Valley Athletic Director Bob Becker turned to the current head football coach, Jerry Kill. What role did you play in finding that coach? I got the opportunity to be on the committee. I felt like I had a decent work in uh, the selection process because, you know, Bob trusted me. Who interviewed you? Well, you know, that AD at the time, Bob Becker, and really Coach Kill. Jerry needed to be part of that because he was trying to change a culture at Saginaw Valley. I felt like we needed somebody uh, similar to me to have the energy to move the program forward. When she walked in the door and and sat down, and as I remember, she kind of took command of the, the room. This gal presses me. I think, I think she can get it done. How'd you find out you got the job? I remember getting a phone call. I was actually at my, gra my grandmother's um, birthday party, and um, someone had said that somebody was trying to get a hold of me from Saginaw Valley, and I was like, wow, really? Okay, so I got on a payphone, payphone, right? That's, I didn't have a no cell, cell phone. phones at no that cell time. Phones at the time. Um, I got on a payphone and uh, called the athletic director, and he offered me the job. After I got the job, they told me that I was the compliance person, the head compliance person, the academic uh, advisor for the entire athletic department, and I was the senior women's administrator. Oh, that's it. <laughs> Aren't those four full-time jobs? And wasn't I hired to do the first one? She's a spunky gal now. That's the thing I liked about her, and it wasn't she's always going to say yes to agree with you to be your friend. Uh, she had to say, "Hey, Coach Kill, I, I don't, I don't buy that." We we're both fiery people. Sometimes there is probably a clash, but there's a great deal of respect. What do you feel like you owe Jerry Kill? Well, I wouldn't be sitting here today without him. I know that because I know for a fact that. Um, probably the biggest reason I'm a co I was a coach at that age with that limited experience is because of him. You never know how people feel about you when you're working together. And she says that, I mean, it makes me feel awfully good. But she did it, and I Coach Kill. If it wasn't for that experience, I would have never had the next opportunity, and certainly not the one that I, that I cherish the most here at Michigan State. 